Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be counting down my top 10 quarterbacks in the 2018 draft. Of course, this is not where I think these guys will end up being drafted, but rather where I evaluate them. I am sure some of these QBs will not be as good as I think, but putting out the video will help me be held accountable later on. So, without further ado, let's get started at number 10. For my number 10 choice, I picked Kurt Ben Kirk, the 6'3", 218-pound quarterback from Virginia. I am in no way in love with Ben Kurt as a prospect, but I think he is a decent one. He has solid arm talent with the ability to fit passes into tight windows. I have seen tape of him throwing the ball 45 plus yards with what appeared to be a simple flick of his wrist. While he does not always look the best, he was also hurt by the quality of his receivers who dropped a decent number of his throws. Overall, he comes across as a competitive guy with solid pocket movement. On the downside, he lacks the accuracy you desire from a prospect at his age. He has a tendency to miss easy throws and has bad completion rates on intermediate and deep balls. He also makes bizarre decisions at times leading to turnover issues. I feel like he too often will stare down his receivers, making it easy for defenders to recognize. These problems make him my number 10 quarterback prospect. Next up, at number 9, is the 6'4", 225 pound quarterback from Washington State, Luke Falk. One of my favorite things about Falk is his release. It is quick and compact, leading to a very pretty ball. Coming from a Mike Leach system, he does a good job of getting his throws out quickly on short hitters. He also looks good throwing fades and back shoulder throws. He can throw passes with solid ball placement that often hit his receivers in stride. For negatives, I find that Falk lacks elite arm talent. He too often floats passes that I would expect an NFL caliber player to make. He was sacked 125 times in his career, and his below average athleticism and his slowness to recognize blitzes is a contributing factor. While he can go through his progressions, he is very much a system quarterback. One key stat to prove that is that almost 74% of his pass attempts were less than 10 yards. All this makes him my number 9. For my number 8 prospect, we have Mike White, the 6'5", 224 pound quarterback from Western Kentucky. This guy is reportedly a former high school pitcher with a 90 mile per hour fastball, so his arm talent is apparent when watching him. Of course, this allows him to fit passes into tight windows and really attack the defense deep when he wants. Some quarterbacks with his arm talent can have a hard time differentiating between fastballs and touch throws, but it is not a huge issue for him. He can go through his progressions and it makes him scary when he has solid protection. Unfortunately, poor protection and average at best athleticism has probably affected his development. He was sacked 46 times last year and his obliviousness and lack of mobility contributed to that total. While he can process to multiple reads, it takes longer than desired from an NFL caliber quarterback. Another troubling stat is that he fumbled 12 times this year and 17 times over two seasons. This is why White is my number 8. For my number 7 quarterback, we have the 6'3 Richmond quarterback Kyle Loletta. This is an FCS guy who has been hyped up for a while and has not disappointed when needing to prove himself. While he does not have as much tape as the others, he does a good job to look off defenders. He also has solid pocket presence and footwork. Richmond's scheme allowed for him to have experience playing from shotgun, pistol, and under center, giving him a leg up over other prospects. On the downside, his arm strength does not appear to be great. His deep throws leave a lot to be desired, which leaves room to question if he has an NFL arm. He has a tendency to get a bit antsy in the pocket, and while he could get away with his mobility at the FCS level, it is unclear whether he can use it in the NFL. Overall, his main concern is how his level of competition allowed him to succeed more than he would have at a D1 school. These questions leave him at number 7. For my number 6 quarterback, we have Mason Rudolph, the 6'5", 235 pound quarterback from Oklahoma State. Obviously, he has ideal size for an NFL quarterback, which allows him to stand tall in the pocket and make reads. He has good movement in the pocket while keeping his eyes downfield. He showed improvement last season, proving that he is still getting better. He can attack the defense in the intermediate and deep areas of the field and is willing to trust his receivers to make plays. He also has the desire to run when needed, leading to his 17 career rushing touchdowns. His biggest negative is his scheme and quality of receivers. He benefited from a spread system with two of college football's better receivers in his last year at the Cowboys. This meant that he was not asked to make too many progressions or operate out of common NFL formations, limiting his experience a bit. 
Also, while his arm talent is solid, he does struggle a bit at times with velocity and ball placement. These questions leave him at number 6. Now at number 5 we have maybe the most polarizing player in the draft, Lamar Jackson. If we were just rating players on playmaking ability, Lamar may be number 1. The former Heisman winner has shown his talent to make home run plays with his arm and legs. Jackson also benefits from his elite arm talent, which is almost reminiscent of Michael Vick in terms of how effortless it appears. He has shown an ability to improve his passing prowess during his time at Louisville, and has come to understand what is appropriate to scramble and what it is not, showing his development as a quarterback prospect. Unfortunately for Lamar Jackson, there are still concerns. I am mainly concerned that he still looks small, and I question if he is built to take consistent hits from NFL defenders. He came to the combine a bit larger than he was with the Cardinals, but still needs to put on a few more. His footwork and pocket presence are still not where you would like them to be, but has shown noticeable improvement. He still too often will underthrow deep passes and miss throws you would expect him to make. One note I have is that he is strangely inaccurate on the move for a mobile quarterback. While he is still improving, as I have said multiple times now, he still has notable struggles that force him to remain at number 5. Now we get to the largely interchangeable top 4. At number 4 I have the definition of a prototypical quarterback prospect in Josh Allen. Allen is 6'5", 230 with easily the best arm in the draft. I think the best comparison you can make for his arm is a rocket launcher. This of course allows him to make all the throws a team could want while threading the needle whenever he wants. He is probably the best in the draft when it comes to deep out routes. Coming from Wyoming, he has experience playing under center and in all types of weather. Another plus is that he is confident enough to consistently attack the defense on intermediate and deep throws. The biggest knock I have is that Allen has never had a completion rate higher than 56% in either of his seasons as a starter. I think he believes that he can get away with anything because of his arm, which leads to bad decisions and taking chances with low percentage passes. It seems like he does not differentiate well between heat and touch when throwing. His ball placement can leave a bit to be desired as well. These issues can be fixed, but typically are not in the NFL, leaving him as my number 4 prospect. Now here is my choice for the number 1 overall pick, though I still rated him as my number 3 quarterback, Sam Darnold. This guy is as tough as they come and is built well to withstand NFL hits. Darnold does an elite job at going through his progressions and taking what the defense gives him. While he does not have the best arm in the draft, his arm talent allows him to throw into small windows with tight spirals. He is able to throw with solid placement and anticipation. He is also just a fearless quarterback who has a natural sense of pressure but does not affect his ability to make reads and accurate throws. For negatives, the biggest one is his strange elongated release. The way his arm winds up before he throws tends to give defenders an early clue where to break on the throw, and that will only be a bigger giveaway to NFL players. His fearlessness has also led to turnover issues. He finished 2017 with 13 interceptions and 9 lost fumbles, and has 20 interceptions over his last 20 games. In my opinion, he was better in 2016, with his decision making taking the biggest step back. His intermediate and deep throws could also use some work. His toughness also leads him to take open field hits rather than slide, which needs to be corrected. While he still has great potential, Darnold is my number 3 guy right now. Another quarterback with great size is Josh Rosen of UCLA. This is a guy with great footwork and solid delivery. He also moves well in the pocket while keeping his eyes downfield looking for open receivers. On blitzes in 2017, Rosen completed 63% of his passes, showing that he is not as affected by pressure as many quarterback prospects. He does a solid job of looking off defenders and using his pocket movements to make plays. Overall, he appears to be a smart quarterback with terrific mechanics and under center experience. I have two major concerns with Josh Rosen, and that's his attitude and durability. My biggest question with Rosen is whether he's coachable or not. I feel like he believes that he is the next great quarterback, but might not be willing to change some issues he has to actually become that. Durability is also a concern because he is not built as well as some of the other quarterbacks and has injury issues dating back to high school. But I can go into some of his technical issues on the field, I think what I just stated is more significant and cause him to be number 2. Now for my number 1 we have the current Heisman winner and controversial Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield. While I have questioned Rosen on coachability, I feel the opposite with Mayfield. This dude is so tough and competitive that he is willing to do anything to be the best. He plays with a massive chip on his shoulder and it makes him a leader on and off the field. 
At Oklahoma, you can see him fully in charge of his offense, and his mastery only improved each year. Mayfield reads the field quickly and makes elite decisions. He actually has a good arm and displays accuracy all over the field. For reference, he completed 53% of his throws of 21 plus yards over the last two years and completed 67% when on the move. Plus, unlike some quarterbacks, he loves competition and will fight to win anywhere he goes. Of course, his major flaw to many teams other than his attitude is that he is not as tall as a traditional NFL quarterback. To go along with that, he comes from a quarterback friendly system at Oklahoma that has not led to many successful NFL quarterbacks. I also feel like his footwork can be inconsistent and he can float deep passes at times. He also has a bit of a hero complex and wants to make the big play when he probably should just throw the ball away. Then to some, he needs to control his cockiness, which is a turnoff to many. Still, I feel like he has the best mix of strengths and limited negatives to be my number one quarterback in the 2018 draft. Well, that's my list, everybody. Let me know if you agree, disagree, or feel like I forgot anyone in the comments below. But thanks for watching, everyone, and until next time. I got it. Top fives don't exist in my world, they pass sportsmanship. Spank your favorite rapper, have them coming back to you. Yeah, of course I'm sick. Poor sport like bottomless crates, wooden boards below courts in this. God, I'm good. A sinners go to defense in the afterlife. Ironic, you can see what I'm gifted with, cause I'm rapping, right? My presence, nothing.